All right, Ryan. So we're just going to anticipate a couple of questions that people might have if they're just tying one of these types of flies for the first time. Um, do they need a special tube fly vise to tie a fly uh, like this? Uh, you can either have a tube fly vise or what we like using a lot of the time is what we tied this fly on, the Pro Sport Fisher Flexi Needle. It allows you to use your regular vise and just put the needle in it like you would a hook and then tie the tubes on it. And it's nice because it has, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but it has square sides on it. So it holds the tube really well without slipping. And do they, um, you know, when they're buying their first set of tubes, is there, you know, a type of tube that, that um, it's just kind of a good all around go-to tube? The Pro Sport Fisher tubes are what we use most frequently. <clears throat> and then they make a full line of cones and beads and everything. And all of their cone heads and bead heads all fit on the medium sized tubing. So that's what I would recommend. You can buy the flexi tubes, which is what we tied this fly on. So the part we tied the fly on is the diameter of a medium tube. And this rear part where the, the knot or your hook goes into is large. So then it, it enables you to tie the fly on a short piece of tubing, but still adjust the length of the back of this based on how far you want your hook to ride. Great. What kind of marabou are you looking for when you're tying a fly like this? Is it just any kind of marabou, woolly bugger marabou, or are you looking for something in particular? Uh, for this, you want like a, a longer, straighter marabou, so like a blood quill. We really like the fish hunter blood quill marabou, or for bigger flies, even the fish hunter spay marabou is nice. You just want something that's a little longer and a little straighter, whereas like woolly bugger marabou is shorter and fuzzier for a smaller fly. And so your, your overall fly, if you're, you're fishing this as like a steelhead tube fly with that kind of nice blood quill marabou, how long of a, of a fly is, is are, are you shooting for in, in just kind of a single, single tube like this? I would say your average fly when it's wet and everything is back is probably three inches or so. Uh, you can base that, or vary that based on your marabou can run from two and a half to three and a half usually, but I would say three inches is a good kind of medium sized steelhead fly. Great, and then in terms of like, if people were gonna tie this in like two other color schemes, like you said, this one has worked for you. And I know we just caught some fish on, on this fly on our last steelhead trip in, in that particular color scheme. But if they wanted to have another option or two options, what, what colors uh, should they get? Black and blue is really popular. And then we like like purple or Fish Hunter makes a color marabou called Magic Magenta that looks really good mixed in with either purple or blue. I kind of like having so a few different variations of lighter colored flies like this one for maybe if the water is a little clearer. And I like having little darker flies based maybe if the water is a little bit dirtier. So if you had if you had pink and orange like this one, black and blue, and then like a purple or fuchsia would be a good good three to have. And we typically seem to do kind of two colors on a tube, which gives it some nice contrast. It seems to make the fly move a little bit more in the water, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. I, I very seldom tie one with just a single color. The, the two colors, especially when it gets wet, this all kind of just melts together and gives you a cool, cool two-colored effect. And then as far as people, you know, if they're buying a hook for, a, for you know, a steelhead fly like this, uh, are, are they just getting any kind of hook? But, I mean, there's special hooks that, that you'd use for this kind of application, right? For these, you would use like a shorter, like this hook here, a shorter, like octopus style hook. And most of them have a slight up eye. I mean, a straight eye is fine too, but the up eye is nice if you're looping looping them on like we usually rig them. You can use, there's any number of them. The Gamagatsu octopus hooks are, are very popular. You can use owners and there's a few other brands as well. Um, yeah, and we, we had really good luck on our, our last trip with the owner no escapes, which we'll, we'll be carrying in the shop really soon. A great barbless hook that makes it easy to keep a fish hooked, but, but easily release them. Um, and then, you know, people might want to know about, you know, tube flies like this, marabou tube fly, could you modify it for like a trout spay fly? You could do the same fly in just more like trouty colors like brown and yellow or black or kind of olive and silver has always been a good trout spay color for me. <clears throat> and if you wanted to make it shorter, you could either look for shorter marabou feathers or you could even take the marabou and put it in a dubbing loop, which we might do a video on coming up also. But if you wanted a fly that was just more in like the two inch range rather than this three inch or a little bit bigger range, which is more of a, a two and a half inch range is probably a better trout spay style fly. Awesome. Any any other thoughts on on this type of fly um, before we uh, before we leave it? It takes a little bit of getting used to tying the fly with this needle sticking out in front, but you 
you kind of just learn to work around it. That's probably the biggest <clears throat> the biggest issue for people that are new to tying tube flies is learning to deal with this little bit sticking out. And finishing the fly with that sticking out could be something they might want to look at, like a longer whip finisher or, or, or yeah. get better at half hitching or whip, whip finishing with your hands is pretty pretty handy, but not, not always something that everybody knows how to do, which we might have to do a video on how to whip finish with your hands too. Yeah, no, you can half hitch it or you can, a lot of people even just put a little bit of super glue on their thread and wrap it two or three times on top of itself and wait for it to dry and cut it off. Kind of saves you from having to, having to finish the fly with this big piece sticking out in, in front of your fly, but they make extended reach whip finishers too, which if you only have, I mean, we've got about an inch sticking out here that that extended reach whip finisher would work on that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ryan. It's a great fly, and uh, we'll uh, we'll put together some more videos soon. Thanks, everybody.